Hello, hi, welcome back. Uh, glad you could join me. So, uh, we're gonna start today doing some programming. So, here's the setup for today, this very first video on doing some actual programming. So, we're gonna talk briefly about computer programming because, again, I'm zooming from my introduction on the overview for this entire course is that I'm gonna target people who are completely new to programming and just wanna get their feet wet and start programming, including people who might also be doing some programming, okay? So, people who know the program and know what computer program is about, just bear with me. I'm gonna spend like just two to five minutes just kind of setting the frame for what we will be doing and what computer program is about. Then we're gonna jump in and just start doing some HTML programming, okay? And then we'll go from there. Um, the idea is to, uh, for especially some of the first set of videos, and where it makes sense, do like a basic video and then something more intermediate and then um, something more advanced, okay? Um, keep in mind that even when I say advanced, because I wanted this material to be approachable by people who are new to computer programming or fairly new, that as you move on and you get more advanced, you're gonna look back and see some of the advanced material and say, oh, that should have been really basic stuff. And that is understandable. I really want you to get to that point where you look back and look at everything that I've done and said it was advanced, that you look at it and you say that, oh, that's really easy and just should be in basic, okay? And then somebody else might come along and look at it and go, oh, that's not advanced at all. That's just basic stuff. And that's okay if somebody else who knows more and understand the stuff better, wants to put it in that category but for what i'm going to be focusing on i'm going to kind of teach you stuff as we go along and all i'm saying is the stuff that's intermediate or medium is a little bit more advanced than the basic stuff and the stuff that's advanced is a little bit more ahead of the stuff that come, came before it and then we'll probably stop there i don't want i don't think it makes sense to overwhelm somebody who's trying to learn with a whole lot of material i'm just trying to give you enough material that i think we're going to use later and then there's still going to be opportunity for us to learn even more things um, later. All right, so enough about that. Let's just keep going because I could spend a whole, waste a lot of time doing that. And I do want to get into the programming. Um, so computer programming, what it is. What is it? <laughs> um, so it's really probably hard to nail down and everybody's going to give you a different definition. But basically, think of it this way. Computers are electronic devices and they're really good at doing things repetitively and doing the same thing over and over. And the way you get the computer to do something is you give it a set of instructions. Once you give a computer a set of instructions, we call that a program. Computers can run many programs. Now that computers today are pretty fast and the technology has advanced a bit, we can have computers run several programs. So for example, you might have like, I have this bracket here running you might have something like brackets and a media player running and your web browser, which we're going to have running soon. So each one of these applications, which should now present themselves, we call it application, is really just a program, a program that once running, you say, oh, this is an application. And so you use them interchangeably, right? You might say, oh, somebody give me an application. I'll let they just give you a program. Or you say, somebody give me a program, right? All right. So that's what a, um, so again, set of instructions. You call it a program, you give it a computer. And this is what this represents. Um, there's whatever I'm being able to do here, all the computer is doing is running over a set of code, the, the code for this particular um, brackets application. And it's doing it in such a way that allows me to interact with in a certain way. And, um, you know, I could have things move around on the screen and there are different parts of the computer software that's responsible for different things, but we're not gonna get very down in the detail. We just keep it simple and say, a program is just a set of instructions. Computers are really good at executing uh, things repetitively. They don't get tired, blah, 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 so long, of course, they have electricity. All right, and what, so then, what kind of things can you turn into a program? What, what are some of the things that a computer can actually do? Computers pretty much only do things that people tell it to do. Are we gonna keep it to that basic thing. Now, people are gonna come along and say, ah, but wait, what about some other fancy new things, but deep learning and all this other stuff? Don't worry about that. We're gonna basically say the only thing that computers can do are the only things that you tell it to do or you somehow train it to do, okay? And so computers, you can go to a computer and say, for example, 
does God exist or what is morality? Any of those kind of existential, spiritual or anything like that, you can't ask a computer questions like that. You can ask a question that somebody else has already and put the answer to or they have programmatically provided the steps to get into that answer. So let me say the, the first part you understand. You can ask a computer something, somebody already give it the answer and so it can just tell you the same thing, give you the answer just by responding or looking it up in its memory or somewhere else where it stored it or it can retrieve it. Or the second part of that, what I just said, is that somebody has provided the steps to give you an answer. An example is this. I'm going to bring up my calculator program here. And so this is an application slash program. We use it interchangeably. And so I can say, what is 45 times 8 or something like that, right? I press equal and it gives me 360. Now, what happened? Did somebody program it, program it in this computer that, you know, 45 times 8 is actually 360? No. What it did was they put the recipe for how to get to this answer in here. So they put, all right, if somebody type in this set of numbers and then they do the operation multiply and then they do another number, this is how you move some bits around. And we're not going to get too detailed about it, but they provided the recipe how you do multiplication. Just like you learned in school, when you have to do multiplication, you multiply this by that and then you carry and all this other stuff. Computer is doing the exact same thing. And for those of you who stick with me till we get to assembly language programming, you're going to see those same bits being carried around. Okay? All right. Teaser. All right. So, summarize. Computer is going to only tell you things that somebody has already told it or provided a recipe for providing, giving you the answer. Can answer existential question or spiritual question or anything like that, right? Um, good. It's really good at computation. And the word computer. All right, so enough about that. Let's get into it. All right. In previous video, the, um, we went through and did the setup for Git, and we also did the installation for brackets. Regardless of what, if you actually want to do the answer on thing, you have to do the brackets installation, even if you don't want to do the Git installation. So if you, have, you install brackets, you can fire it up however you want to start it on your particular platform, Linux, Windows, Mac. You can start right now. I'm using Mac here. Um, you can start it up. And once you start it up, um, you can now click on File, Open Folder, and go to some part of your computer where you can, you know, uh, create a directory. And if you're on Mac, you can see that though I can do that by, you know, clicking new folder here and creating a directory or whatever, um, wherever. So I'm not going to navigate my file system to show you, but uh, you feel free to go navigate somewhere and store that wherever makes sense for you. Okay. And you probably want to create a new directory and store and say that, you know, you're going to save the files there. All right. After you've done that, oh, um, how, however you want to store it is up to you, but just to give you a heads up or a suggestion if you like. So wherever you want to store it in your home directory or somewhere else, you create a new directory. And if you like, you can say learn computer programming. And then within there, you can create, well, we don't actually have chapter one and we didn't do um, it with the videos or, you know, an introduction set up and so on. But now the first place where we're actually going to be writing code, basically you need to save it something, is actually in HTML. That's where we start in. And then within HTML, you can put, you know, basic. And instead of putting medium, just put intermediate. <laughs> I'll change that to intermediate, okay? Um, um, and maybe medium. Ah, maybe. I uh, maybe see intermediate seems more appropriate. Yeah, I should probably change that to intermediate. All right. So, um, so then, so yeah, so that's what you want to do. And then, um, we'll just start putting or saving our code in those, in that directory. Right. So you can pause this video so you can create this directory structure. You know, um, I guess you can ignore the first two, but up to you. Um, and then that's where we're going to start writing code here. HTML and then we, today we're going to put some stuff in in this video we're going to put stuff in basic and then out of the word we'll put stuff in intermediate or medium <laughs> depends on if I decide to leave it all right so now that you have um, brackets installed 
a few other things that you might want to do. Um, you might want to uh, click here on the extension manager and by default back here doesn't come with too many things installed and you could see on this install tab I have a number of things installed. I have beautify it install and I have git bracket gets install and some other things. Uh, you, you don't need a more HTML code. You don't need to worry about all those. The only one I would suggest you install is beautify. And then for people who are using Git, you might want to install Git. Now, how do you install something? You go here to available teams, to available tab, and then you type. So you type V A U T I, you know, I find. Yeah, for a second there, I had a brain freeze. But anyway, um, and then you search for it and you'd select and then you'd click install. Mine, it looked like mine needs updating. Um, and then once you find whatever you want, uh, you know, um, once you, you find whatever you want, you just click install. Okay. So, uh, as an example, I can do click here and say, uh, install. What does it say? Uh, yep. I click install and this went dim. Okay. And I could close and it might ask you to restart after installing some of this stuff and just, just click OK or restart. But other than that, it's fine. This icon just means that out there, when this is lit up like this, it just means that um, there's a new version of brackets. Uh, you can just click it and it'll tell you, oh, there's a new version with these new capabilities or features or bug fixes or whatever. You can click get it now to get it and redo the installation like we did before. If you install a Git plugin, you're going to have this icon. And when you click it, it toggles and it enables this bar at the bottom here where you can um, store your Git code. Um, this is a part of the beautified uh, HTML skeleton and beautified stuff. So don't worry about that. All right. Let's just get started. Okay. So let's click here and let's say new file. And I'm going to say index.html. Okay. And then I'm going to say hello. And then I'm going to, so you see the shortcut here, the keyboard shortcut command S for Mac is going to be control S in windows and control S in probably um, Linux also instead of command. And so whatever the shortcut is, you can learn that or you can always keep going to file save, but it might help you to learn the shortcuts. And you notice how something changed here. Well, let me do it again. Hello world. And so when it's not saved, you see this little dot. And once I save it, the dot goes away. So I hit the shortcut command S since it's so fast and you just see something like blink there. Now, let me click this and say live preview. And what it's going to do, it's going to start up. It's going to open a web browser for me. Oh, by the way, we did this already during the installation. Um, you need Chrome installed. So if you don't have Chrome installed, Google Chrome, go back and do the installation for bracket and install Google Chrome. Okay. So now when I did that, what it actually did is it start serving up um, like a web server, just like um, you would try to access a page from Google and um, your, web, your web browser. And this is my web browser here. And it's trying to access something that's, you know, my local computer. And we're not going to get into all this, but I, this is my local computer and some port. We're not going to talk about that either. Later on, we talk about ports and all that stuff. But basically, it, it started up a server, a web server on my computer in the background, brackets did, and it starts serving this page that I'm working on, this index.html file. And there I type hello world, and you can see it there. And so that's one reason I want to use bracket, because now I can go ahead and I can type, um, you know, nice to see you. Uh, see you. And then I'm going to save it again. And when I go over here and click update, you, you can see it. Now, you, you're starting to see something strange, right? Is that I've separated these two lines here. Basically, I have line one and line two, but yet you see them together here. We're going to tag this all HTML and how the browser sees things. So here, I was just writing just text and the web browser is serving it. Um, the web browser is fetching it and displaying it for you. So let's back up a little bit. So why index that HTML? 
basically when you write program, you remember I said before, a program is just a set of instructions that you give to the computer. So here, at each programming language, you, have, you tend to write, um, they have some code convention where the file name, where you're going to write your source code, right? Um, so you write a program by giving a set of instructions, but that, that program is written in something called a source file. The reason why it's written in a source file is because the source file and the resulting file that you're going to distribute and give people might be two different things. Uh, we're going to spend time on that when it makes sense to focus on that. Just know that how, you know, the format in which you, you write the program is not necessarily the format in which a computer consumes it, that so uses it, or it's always distributed. So that's why we try to separate the idea between what's the source format and what's the like, executable or distributed format or anything like that or the compile format. So when it makes sense to talk about that, we, we will. So needless to say, um, here we have this, we're going to write HTML code and the extension is HTML. Um, when you give a file an extension, it allows the computer, your operating system to make suggestions on programs that you can use to open it. Okay. And so that's, that's one of the advantages of giving it uh, extension. It helps you maintain your sanity because you can look at a file and say, oh, I expect to find HTML code in there. If you, versus if you see a file that had that C, you'd expect to find C code and that JS, you'd expect to find JavaScript code. And you'd be pretty confused if you saw a file with that HTML and you open it and it was assembly language code, right? Nothing illegal with it, it's just, you know, for that reason. Anyway, for your insanity and for the sanity of others who you're going to work with. And so the index, this first part, <clears throat> for now, we're going to ignore that and just say that oh, by convention, um, most web pages or a web page within a directory, if it's the only web page, it would usually be called index.html, but it can be called anything else and it would work just fine. It's just that because of this convention of using index, when the web server points to a directory to serve up that page, if there's a file indexed at HTML, if you don't specify which file to, to get, it will just send you the file that's got indexed at HTML. But if the file had a different name, you'd have to say, I want that file. So <clears throat> again, we're not going to spend too much time on it. Excuse me. <clears throat> Let me drink something. Sorry. But basically, if I give this another name, I'll have to specify the name at the end here. Uh, let's see if I could get to the end. Um, so here it, it, it is showing the index of the HTML file, but we'll see later on when we do web server, when we get into more web development, you're going to see that if this was left off, you, it, it would actually work still because it understand that index of the HTML file is the default file sort of to think of it. All right. So we've covered extension HTML. This file name it could be anything, but we're going to start off just calling ours index HTML. And then here's our code or HTML code. It doesn't really look like code right now, right? Does it? It looks just like regular layman text in English. And that's what we type. But notice how the browser is interpreted, not how you would expect it to be, right? And that is because the browser is expecting this file HTML code. And when it interprets that way, um, it renders it's the way it thinks it should, it, when you write it this way, it is how it thinks it should render it. So HTML goes by something called tags, and that's what it used to try help write your code. And what is a tag? So let's just write a tag and then we'll go from there. So a tag is basically something that looks like this. It has an angle bracket and a name or a word, and then it's followed by a close so this is a opening tag where you put this angle bracket, name, close, angle bracket. That's a start tag or opening tag. End tag is less than forward slash name, close bracket. That, so this is a tag. This is a tag. But you're going to actually hear people say that, you know, the tag that I'm talking about here is name. That's the tag name, right? Tag name is name. Well, let's make it another tag. Let's call it P, for example. So people may say, oh, I'm talking about the P tag. So they would refer to this as the P tag. And if they say write the P tag, what it really mean is you should specify it this way by putting the opening tag, 
and a closing tag, right? And then we call this entire thing, we can call it a tag. Now, when we start talking about it, um, XML or something, if we do, you can also hear people refer to this as an element, okay? And that's a more, what must I say, probably more generic name um, to call it, an element. This is an element. Um, but you can use tags and element interchangeably. And we should probably say that oh, this is an element because when we start writing JavaScript code, we're going to start looking stuff up by element, right? The element name. And again, thanks for computer scientists, this is an element so we can have the this whole thing being called an element and this is the element name P or we can also call it the tag P or the P tag, okay? When you, you usually say tag when you're dealing with HTML and in XML you might more call it an element, okay? But both are valid and don't spend too much time worrying about it, just accept that's what it is, that people call it tags and element interchangeably and all you need to know is if I say right um, tag or the element um, V, you do this. You put a, a less than bracket, you type V, you type a close bracket, and now because I'm using bracket, it's completing it for me. So as soon as I close the tag, it, it you know puts an end tag also, it's just helping me out, right? But that's all you need to do. And then if I say put something inside the tag, it means that I put it here, right? Between, between the end tag and the close tag. So that's another fact about HTML and tags slash elements. Remember, I'm going to use them interchangeably, so get used to hearing one or the other. And in your brain, you hear tag, think element, you hear element, think tag. You always nest them. You always nest it. Something always go in between here, between the start and end tag. Okay? Something goes there. Well, if something is required, it goes there because there's some tag that, you know, they don't require something there because the, the name or the meaning of the tag is implicit in what it's trying to do. So that's one way of doing a tag. So this is an empty tag. You can also do an empty tag like this, right? So don't let this confuse you. It just saves you some typing from typing this. And what it's saying is I know that oh, there's not ever, never going to be anything inside of this tag. So I'm going to just write it this way. So when you write it this way, there's absolutely no way to put anything inside of this tag, right? And why would we want to do a tag like this, right? Or element like this? Well, because there's one other thing. So you can put attributes on a tag. So I can say, this is my tag V, and it takes an attribute called, I don't know, name, and name equals to varil or something. And there's another um, attribute called, I don't know, data birth or something like that, right? And it equals to whatever, right? And so when you do it like this, you can still close it off this way. Or, let me copy and paste. Or you can put it this way. And so you see, this, this way format allows you to put something, put attributes in. So both of them allow you to type attributes, but this way you cannot nest anything inside of it. You can only put attributes. And think of attributes as modifiers. They, they kind of modify how this thing operates, right? We'll see that a little bit. So let's back up and we'll go over this again. You want to write a tag or element, you just need to know its name. So which, which tag are we going to use? Let's use the P tag. I'll put P, uh, put less than, P close plane. And let's stick um, the code that we have here. Let's stick it in there, this hello world. So I'm going to cut this. I highlight it, cut it, and I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to surround this text with another P tag. And I'm going to cut it and paste it in there, okay? And so now I'm going to save. And if I go here and refresh, notice what happens. The same code I had before, except before I had a P tag around it, it put it all in one line. With the P tag, which means paragraph, by the way, in HTML, it says, hey, hello world is one paragraph, so start a paragraph in the paragraph. And hence, because hello world is inside of the start of the paragraph and before you get to the end, that's one paragraph. And nice to see you is in a totally different paragraph. And so hence why now it's separated it like that way. 
So you have just learned to use the P tag. And so what do you have just learned? You've just learned something. You've just learned that tags, a tag comes with start and end, unless of course it's the funny one where you do something like this, right? That one. Um, it's always nest. You always nest tag, right? Well, if you have to put in something inside of it, you nest it. Tags can also have attributes, right? I call them properties before, but the correct word I, I should have used is attributes, right? So they have attributes. And so an attribute would be, well, we'll say example of attributes. It would be, for example, if I said ID equals paragraph two, for example. Paragraph two. And then here I can give ID equals paragraph one. And so now I've used this attribute ID on this P tag. And then the value of this particular attribute is just paragraph one and paragraph two. And then I could use even more attributes. There's a number of them. And we're going to learn them as we go along. We'll see what makes sense. Okay. All right. So you just learned a paragraph tag. What are the funky tags that they are, are there that we can use and have fun with? What about if um, you type your name? So you type your name, I'll type my name. You have to type. So I'll type Beryl Adams. And then I might want to see my name in bold. So we use the B tag. And so I'm going to copy this. Uh, I'm copy it. And put this inside here. And then now I'll save. And if you're falling behind, just pause, rewind, and catch up. Now, I'm somewhat of probably a little bit fast typer, so it might be hard for you to look at the screen and keep up with my typing. But remember, I want to keep the videos, um, you know, a certain length. And so, um, yes, I might go a little bit fast, but you certainly should pause and stop and so on. So, there's the B tag. And there's also an I tag for italize. So that would be tag as a bold and the I tag for italize. And so if we save and we refresh, we'll see my name is now italize. Hey, there's also an underline tag. You for underline. You already if you're doing this right now, you're already writing code. You're writing HTML code. HTML. You're already programming. You can go tell your friends, your family. I have been programming. I've written a program. I can bring it up in any web browser and I can see it, right? Um, you can't make it available to them just yet. Quite a bit ways to go to for that. But basically, uh, you can open up another web browser if you have Safari or something. You can actually open that and you can copy and paste this link up here and it would actually work. So if I copy this and I say this and I say Safari and then I paste this in Safari, and you can see it also works in Safari. Same exact um, thing. Safari brings it up, shows the underline and everything, right? So yeah, you're writing HTML code, people, right? So congrats on your first HTML program. And so you've learned a P tag for paragraph. You learned a B tag for bold. You learned the I tag for italized, and you've learned the U tag for underline. And I think this is probably a good place to stop before this video gets too long. And so we'll continue in the intermediate section, I guess, or medium's <laughs> intermediate. I'll, I'll, I'll rename the actual intermediate. So um, yeah, this directory should be renamed. Intermediate, all right? So, um, We'll continue the next time and we're going to just start off from here. We're going to literally copy this file, paste it here, and then we'll continue modifying and learning even more. So in summary, these are the tags you've learned. So let me just copy and paste so you can look back. You've learned the paragraph tag, bold tag, the ital italics tag, and there you go. And then I'm going to save and I'm going to go over here and click refresh. And there they are. And again, you know why they're appearing in one line. It's because they're not in paragraphs. And you can fix that very easily. You can try it for yourself and see how you can say, 
Remember when I told you about t um, tags, they nest. And so if you don't want to try it, that's fine. But if you want, you can go ahead and try it. But in the next video, we'll talk more about nesting and we're going to look at a few more tags. All right, that's it. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.